Okay. Um, I would like to call upon and introduce Dr. Mohammed Al Sheif. Um, he received his medical certification from the College of Medicine at King Faisal um, University in Dammam in 2003. He went on to receive a Saudi speciality um, certification, which is a Saudi board in internal medicine and Arab um, board for medical speciality in 2008. Um, he doesn't want me to uh, give a list of his accolades. Basically, this is um, Dr. Al Shif. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Ms. Thilma, for a kind introduction. I know I'm standing between you and the lunch time. Most of you hungry, and you have um, we call it pre-brandial effect. So the concentration curve is down. So I will try to raise it up and sustain it. So uh, we, uh, we we do apologize for the delay. Uh, because we will be uh, because we started late so we will be late so we will cut down the lunch break for 30 to 40 minutes i will try to be as fast as possible so the topic is uh, reversal of bleeding secondary to anticoagulant therapy and i will highlight my objectives by uh, present new frontiers in reversal of anticoagulant talking about four factor prothrombin complex concentrate pcc specific reversal agent for NUAX. Dr. Hazza touched upon that, but I will elaborate more and present and discuss some case uh, scenario and summary and take home message. So often we become uh, so focused on the finish line, the end of the presentation, but we fail to enjoy the journey. So I hope you enjoy the presentation and you don't look for the finish uh, line. Always you need to simplify. I always believe that simplicity is the most ultimate sophistication. So try to make the presentation as simple as possible. Bleeding, we have one arm and we have prevention of venous thromboembolism recurrence and another arm. We cannot have a drug that is effective in prevention or treatment, but on the other hand, increase the risk of bleeding. So they go together parallel. They are like the body and the uh, head, so you cannot separate the body from the head. That's why always when we start anticoagulant uh, therapy, we look at the risk-benefit ratio of the patient. And bleeding associated with increased mortality and morbidity across spectrum of arterial and venous thrombomolic disease, not only venous thromboembolism, atrial fibrillation, uh, myocardial infarction, uh, peripheral arterial disease, and stroke and has four prophylaxis particularly associated with lower use of evidence-based medicine in at-risk patients. Oftentimes, patients at risk, moderate risk or high risk, but we do exaggerate the risk of bleeding. And patients might be deprived from essential therapy, life-saving therapy, to prevent venous thromboembolism, especially in post-operative patients who undergo major surgery. That's why bleeding is a very important issue. It has to be discussed. Case fatality rate for major bleeding in VTE treatment is 8 to 9 percent. This is high uh, percentage. We look, uh, prescription of anticoagulant is not just single step. We prescribe, then we sleep on it. So you have to look at a comprehensive approach from initial presentation of the patient across a uh, spectrum of healthcare encounters and keep in mind if the patient develop bleeding what should I do? How to manage? How to reverse? So that's why I call bleeding as a nightmare for uh, physicians. Everything in life is need, find balance. So you have to find a fine balance between the thromboembolism and major bleeding. We give a drug to prevent major thromboembolism like pulmonary embolism. In the meantime, we don't want to cause a bleeding. 
So this is a perinephric hematoma, which necessitated uh, a nephrectomy for one of our patients who had very uh, nephric hematoma ended up with nephrectomy. And major bleeding, already I mentioned, to emphasize it has high case fatality rate. This is talking about the cl classical pathway when you overlap rapidly acting anticoagulant like uh, lumeric heparin or fondabarinix or unfractionated with vitamin K antagonist warfarin. They found that intracranial hemorrhage is increased in the first or initial three months due to overlapping because sometimes overlapping is not smooth. You have a patient labile INR or delayed, you know, uh, okay, achievement of the target INR. So this, you know, overlapping might increase the risk of intracranial hemorrhage. That's why we have high uh, intercranial hemorrhage in the first three months, more than three months. I think this is not applicable to the single drug approach or the switching approach, uh, which you start lumicotiparin, then switch to uh, NUAC like uh, dabigatran. But this is, you have to keep it in mind. And in incidence of major bleeding in phase three studies for across different indications, AFib, VTE studies, thromboembolism, all summed up because you have different duration. Like thromboprophylaxis, it could be just uh, two to five weeks. For AFib studies, long, one to two, five feet. The longer, you might have higher risk of bleeding, but annual rate of major bleeding is one to three percent. The major advantage and advance in new oral anticoagulant or direct oral anticoagulant is the reduction of intracranial hemorrhage. Reduction of intracranial hemorrhage, you can see it clearly. There is here about 70% reduction of intracranial hemorrhage by using dabigatran 110 milligram BID to a lesser extent in rivaroxaban, but significantly with uh, apixaban 5 milligram BID. But all of them, they share the same conclusion. There is a major reduction in intracranial hemorrhage with the use of new oral anticoagulant. Warfarin, always we say, it is narrow uh, therapeutic index. What does it mean? That you have to keep the INR only between two and three. If it is less than three, this is like for AFib patient, it will increase the risk of ischemic stroke, cardioembolic stroke. If you have INR increasing, it does increase the risk of intracranial hemorrhage, and you can see the odds ratio. Odds ratio, the way we read it, like here, if it is INR4, it can increase the odds ratio almost two. Two mean double fold, increase twice, compared to a patient uh, not taking uh, warfarin, control patient. You reach to seven, it might reach to tenfold, then increase the risk. That's why important. Yes, the guideline, they recommend not to reverse a patient with high INR in the setting of no bleeding, but you have to individualize your approach. A patient might be elderly, frail, uh, at risk of bleeding. We'll talk about it in the next slides. We use uh, has blood score. This is a score to predict, predict the risk of bleeding for patients using only vitamin K antagonist warfarin, but not using the new oral anticoagulant. Hypertension, abnormal renal and liver function, that's very important. Baseline investigation for any patient admitted. Stroke, if a patient stroke increase the risk. Bleeding, history of previous bleeding, part of the history, always we ask about VTE, risk factor and bleeding, labile INR. That's important, labile INR, like Dr. Fadl uh, touched upon that, labile INR in uh, chronic kidney disease or renal failure, yes, we do suffer, they have labile INR. It does increase the risk of bleeding. If you have uh, alternative, you switch to the NOACs. But if the patient is like renal failure, you have to continue. There are uh, modalities, uh, sophisticated. We don't want to go for it. Use some medication like low-dose vitamin K to sustain, sustain low-dose to maintain iron therapeutic range. Major bleeding, just talking about one study, because many studies to discuss the NOACs, Einstein, DVT, and B. This is polled analysis. Hazard ratio about 50% reduction. 50% reduction of major bleeding. When you talk about major bleeding, we define it about in a critical organ like retroperitoneal, intracranial, uh, gastrointestinal, or thorax. Or it could be, uh, this is sorry, fatal, or it could be in a critical site. Already I mentioned, uh, uh, so summarize it or simplify it. Cause death or a critical site like intracranial or uh, intra-abdominal or retroperitoneal or intramuscular with compartment or fall in hemoglobin more than two, 
or requiring blood transfusion. So any one of them will fulfill the criteria of major bleeding. You don't need to have all of them. Many times we don't have major bleeding, not fulfilling criteria, but we call it clinically relevant non-major bleeding. It's important because patient might present to the clinic like the, the newer anticoagulant, they frequently complain of urogenital bleeding, menorrhagia, prolonged menstrual cycle. This important, you, there are uh, medications like uh, combined hormonal, uh, combined uh, oral contraceptive, or there is progesterone pill. It can be used as long as the patient on uh, anticoagulant therapy, effective anticoagulant therapy and compliant. Because remember, the half-life is short. After 24 hours, the effect is gone. So the patient, if adherent to medication and taking the uh, oral uh, contraceptive therapy, it can prevent pregnancy because we want to prevent pregnancy. In addition, it does control the uh, bleeding rate. One doctor makes work for another. Very, uh, I think that's applicable in our clinical uh, practice. Going to the management, FFP, fresh frozen plasma, four-factor PCC, activated four-factor PCC, and protamine sulfate and specific uh, reversal agent for NUACs like monoclonal antibody, idarosizumab, or recombinant factor 10, portula. So what's unit FFP? FFP, fresh frozen plasma, um, it could be whole blood derived or it could be apheresis. So the unit is variable from 250 to 500. So we don't encourage you to just you write the dose. The dose of the FFP is 15 to 20 ml per kg. Remember that it does contain all necessary clotting factors for hemostasis, each with different half-life. Very important that longest half-life is six to eight hours. So if a patient is presenting with vitamin K associated major bleeding and you reverse with FFP, what will happen after six to eight hours or say 12 hours, it will be bounce back. INR will go high. That's why you have to supplement the patient with vitamin K. So vitamin K, in addition to FFP. If you give only FFP, you are wasting resources because again, the INR will uh, bounce. As I mentioned earlier, a dose of 10 to 20 ml per kg is, will increase coagulation factors by 30%. We don't need to super saturate 100%. Only 30% is enough. Just to explain it in this uh, diagram, this is zone of anticoagulation, INR two to three. See the blood, uh, the clotting factor concentration about 10%. If you give FFP the recommended dose 10 to 20 ml per kg, you will raise it to here. So you drop the INR and you raise the clotting factor 30%. If you say, oh, why not to supersaturate 200? Yes, you'll have risk of overload. A patient, most of our patients on anticoagulation, they have heart failure, elderly, diastolic dysfunction. So enough, just give this dose. Don't underdose, don't overdose. So vitamin K correct coagulopathy, either due to vitamin K deficiency, like malnutrition, or antagonism with warfarin. Most patients will have substantial uh, reduction INR within 6 to 12 hours of receiving IV. So fast, if I give IV vitamin K, it can 6 to 12 hours, 6. Patient. But if you give it oral, usually for non-urgent sitting, it takes almost 24 hours the next day. Vitamin K should be administered, should not be given IM because increased risk of bleeding and not given subcutaneous because it is not effective. The key point about 2008 and 2012 ACCB guideline that for patients taking vitamin K with INR between 4.5 and 10 and with no evidence of bleeding, don't give vitamin K if the patient takes warfarin. This is non-bleeding. If the patient is bleeding, you give ahead, regardless. The other one, if the eyes are more than 10 and the patient is not bleeding, you have to give low dose of vitamin K, 2.5. Don't give 10 milligram to make uh, to render resistant rewarfarinization. What are alternatives to FFP? This is considered to be new advance in the field. PCC is available as a small volume. Imagine that you give a patient FFP 1,500 unit. Here, you give a patient 100, 100 ml. So about how many times you compare 100 compared to 1,500. PCC is a concentrated clotting factor 25 times more than FFP. 
and the maximum dose we give 3,000. 3,000, you might get 120 ml only. So this is the maximum of ablation. The rate of fusion should not exceed two to three minutes per uh, two, three ml per minute. So the maximum you infuse, it, we do infuse it in 15 minutes, the infusion rate. Post dose, after 15 minutes, you check the INR. It's like a magic, 15 minutes, you check INR. If you have point of care, you will, you'll see a substantial reduction in the INR and you might see it 1.2 or 1.1. This is the available in Saudi Arabia, Preplex and Octaplex. So prothrombine uh, complex uh, concentrate. It contains all necessary clotting factor, two, seven, nine, ten, in addition to protein C and S. Why you have protein C and S? To have fine, balanced formula. You don't want to overcorrect. You don't want to correct the bleeding with a thrombosis. So BCC contains more concentration of clotting factors. In addition, you have protein S and protein C to offer a balanced formula of clotting. So you have just correction of the bleeding rather than causing uh, paradoxical uh, thrombosis. It does differ from FFP, faster onset of action, 10 to 30 minutes, more effective normalizing INR, less time to prepare, no thawing. So for FFP, you need 30 minutes of thawing because it's frozen. Uh, sorry, it, it's frozen. And less time to prepare, no thawing, and avoid fluid overload clotting factors. I mentioned 25 times more concentrated in uh, BCC and more safety with regards to viral and prion contamination and less incidence of uh, transfusion-related lung injury. So indication uh, acquired deficiency of prothrombine, uh, coagulation factor like uh, vitamin K antagonist warfarin, or congenital deficiency of any vitamin K-dependent clotting factor like factor 2, 7, 9, 10. Again, it indicated in preoperative uh, bleeding, pre, a patient like on anticoagulant, uh, vitamin K with urgent ble bleeding requiring surgery, uh, I mean with bleeding that require, require urgent surgery, it can be used to reverse, even post-op. So you have so many guidelines. I see guidelines like you are a crossroad, you don't know where to go. But the most commonly used is American College of Chest Physicians. So vitamin K, IV 10 milligram, recombinant factor 7, may be considered as alternative to BCC. This is 2008, I will talk about 2012, and uh, repeat based on INR. And the dose is variable, is not fixed according to the severity of bleeding and INR elevation. But the maximum one, if you are in the patient bleeding massively, you want to correct just to give 3,000, this is the maximum dose for urgent bleeding, INR, like bleeding, upper jet bleeding, bleeding like a fountain, so you just give uh, 3,000 without uh, calculation, this will, uh, this is the maximum dose that will correct uh, the INR, and you see the effect, how it is tremendous effect within 20 minutes, so about efficacy 93% of patients reach target INR. It's also cost effective based on nice guidelines, and this is 2012, now they put it. For patients with vitamin K associated major bleeding, we suggest rapid reversal of anticoagulation with four factor prothrombin complex, concentrate PCC, and they recommend against using recombinant factor seven. Again, what about the new oral anticoagulant? This is uh, on healthy volunteers, showed positive signal that it can be used a reversal of uh, new oral anticoagulant. Now we have a case series. So case series for PCC for the bigger trend bleeding, it's positive. PCC seems to have a good effect in controlling bleeding in cases. In these cases, remember they all very important. Let's look at the GFR more than 30. They are not, they did not reach endocrine disease or hemodialysis. So on the other hand, if a patient they have uh, severe uh, renal insufficiency, GFR is low. It's very uh, worse uh, or grave uh, or guarded prognosis. This is, that's why we need to uh, take them for hemodialysis to reverse the effect of the bigatron. There are ongoing study according to uh, clinicaltrials.gov that two months I checked the last search, still ongoing study to be used in uh, randomized control uh, fashion, use of PCC. Recombinant factor seven for no bleeding has no role. Managing bleeding has to be tailored to the uh, severity of bleeding. 
Is it mild bleeding? So where you delay next dose or discontinue treatment? Is it a moderate symptomatic treatment, mechanical compression, fluid replacement, blood product, etc.? Or life-threatening bleeding, you consideration of PCC, charcoal filtration, hemodialysis, like for the bigot run. There are the new uh, reversal strategies for uh, NUAX. Regarding, starting by the first one, more clonal antibody, idarosuzumab, this is for dabigatran, past phase one, phase two, and phase three trials, and if it, uh, it was approved as a fast track, for a, uh, it's not yet available in Saudi Arabia. For the time being, if a patient bleeding, uh, I will use BCC, till we have the uh, anti uh, or direct uh, reversal agent. For anti-10A, direct uh, 10A inhibitor, like uh, rivaroxaban, abixaban, eduxaban. So we have another agent, we call recombinant factor 10A portular, past phase one, phase two, phase three trial is still ongoing. Again, if I have a patient, I will use BCC for this patient. So what about idarosizumab? It is fully humanized antibody fragment, potentially, potently bind the bigatran, and the binding affinity of the antidote Idarosuzumab is more than 350 times than the binding of the Bigatran. This is based on this trial, a reverse AD trial, that they have two groups, group A patient having life-threatening bleeding or major bleeding, bleeding and the other one who require a patient on the Bigatran requiring urgent surgical intervention. Both of them, they used dilute thrombine time so this is the best uh, coagulation parameter to monitor uh, the bigot run. They found the reversal or correction of the coagulopathy was almost 95% up to uh, 100%. So this drug was approved uh, immediately. For rivaroxaban, I already mentioned that we have uh, indexanet alpha uh, and uh, awaiting for phase three trial. Only drug that uh, can be removed by hemodialysis is the bigatran because it has low plasma protein binding, about 35%, and it is highly water soluble. The, the practical uh, dilemma, because such patients, when they present with massive bleeding and they need hemodialysis, so the nephrologist say, oh, how come I put central line? A patient is bleeding, so putting central line maybe for intensive, again, we, we, it's not straightforward. Such cases, I think, it's not straightforward. Just say, uh, go for hemodialysis because it has to be a discussion in between the nephrologist, intensivist, and uh, thrombologist. This is a case series, uh, about six patients. They found, again, they look at the thrombine time uh, after hemodialysis, so it was normalization of the APTT because this is the best parameter. This is a crude parameter. It's not the best but we don't rely on INR. So hemodialysis, it does remove uh, the drug from, if a patient having high risk of bleeding, and uh, as a patient having bleeding and high risk of thromboembolism, you, you can put IVC filter, retrievable, temporary measure, not uh, permanent IVC filter. The mainstay of patient on anticoagulant, you have to educate the patient. If they develop bleeding, they should not, because there are mild, moderate, or severe, they should not delay uh, seeking medical uh, attention. That's why we have education material about what you do uh, if you are taking anticoagulant and you have a bleeding. This is a patient, I will go quickly over case scenarios. The first patient presenting with sudden pulmonary embolism, I usually call a case scenario, they are like the contrast for CT. So this is the contrast of the presentation. A subtle pulmonary embolism, because it mimics the shape of subtle, a patient received a thrombolytic therapy, TBA, and was complicated by major bleeding, retroprotein hematoma. So what do you do for this patient? See how it's drop of hemoglobin, maybe 60 gram. Stop TBA, it has a short half-life, only five minutes. So once you stop, the effect is gone. So you, then you transfuse the patient with blood product like cryo. This is a general hemostatic measures. But reassure that it is short half-life. You can give everything, there is nothing specific. But if you have bleeding, you stop, and you give other blood product, supportive blood product. Other case scenario, bleeding with vitamin K antagonist. This is a one of our patient, 57-year-old uh, female, end-stage renal disease, uh, hemodialysis through left AV fistula, 
which was not functioning, complicated by aneurysmal dilatation. So the patient uh, on anticoagulation for a provoked right leg DVT by femoral uh, central venous catheter. So admitted under vascular surgery for internal jugular perm cath insertion with supratherapeutic INR, it was six. So the, what was done for the patient, a patient was given uh, FFP, it did drop uh, the INR, but was not given vitamin K. So after they lowered the INR, they started the patient on uh, unfractioned heparin because it's a protocol for them. So what happened next day, she started to experience sudden onset painful swelling at AV fistula with INR pounds back, ABTT again up, drop hemoglobin from seven to five. So this is the patient. So there was uh, pleading inside the aneurysmal dilatation. So what need to be done for the patient? So they want to take the patient to the OR. In the meantime, the patient have high risk of bleeding. So is there any reversal agent available at KFMC? That time, we, we were consulted, and the patient was given 2,000 unit PCC. We calculated, because they do 30 to 50 kg, and vitamin K 10 milligram with normalization for INR after one hour, and the patient was taken for OR for AV uh, and using repair with successful outcome. We are bringing you successful. Yes, on the other hand, we might have failures, but this is uh, bringing to you educational uh, cases. So how this is a drug that we can use uh, uh, to expedite uh, the correction uh, of uh, supertherapeutic INR. Other case, bleeding with vitamin K antagonist. So the patient bled uh, GI bleeding, which was confirmed by our GI endoscopy. Uh, this patient is what not like massive bleeding, but the drop of hemoglobin was significant for the hemoglobin and used to be normal. So we don't know, is it oozing over one month? Is it just acute? The mean time, so this patient, it is, by the way, bleeding a state with high mortality. I will give the patient the benefit of doubt. We reverse it immediately. Reversal with FFP, sorry, with PCC, and it was reversed successfully, and we transfused the patient, and the patient uh, improved. Other case, in Eurobahajet patient, this time bleeding not on uh, oral anticoagulant. This is bleeding on uh, inoxaparin. So this patient is bedridden since four years due to neurobahjet. Uh, and she uh, complained of three days history of arm swelling for which she was advised for to use cold compression and elevation without resolution of her symptoms. So she presented to ER with worsening severe painful swelling and bruising of the arm. So this is the picture. You can see there is bleeding and bending uh, compartment syndrome. So important to ask, when was the last time the enoxaparin was given? So the antidote for uh, enoxaparin or lumicotiparin is protamine sulfate. Interestingly, protamine sulfate was discovered by serendipity. Protamine sulfate uh, was used or added to heparin to prolong the half-life, just uh, extrapolating from uh, insulin. So added regular insulin to protamine, they prolong the half-life. We have protamine NPH intermediate acting. So they added to heparin to, to prolong the half-life. Then they found uh, it, it does neutralize the effect. That's why this drug uh, was discovered by serendipity or incidentally. How to reverse? We give men one milligram protamine sulfate for every one milligram of enoxaparin. If it is more than eight hours has elapsed since the last dose of enoxaparin was administered or if the 10A is still elevated. So if it is the patient, so that's why we ask when was the last dose given. We, if the patient, we have, like this patient, uh, she received another dose. The other dose is 0.5 milligram protamine sulfate per K, or per, per, the initial one, one milligram easy per one milligram of inexaparine. The second dose, you can repeat if the patient is still bleeding, you give half dose, 0.5 milligram protamine sulfate per one milligram of inexaparine. If the patient coming more than 12 hours has elapsed since enoxaparin, administration of protamine sulfate may not be necessary. So we have to ask when was the dose given. If it is more than 12 hours, no need to give the patient. If it is less than eight hours, you can still give the patient. In, in addition, you have the privilege of anti-factor 10A if you have it in your hospital. So the maximum neutralization of the anti-factor 10A is about 60%. I think the uh, last uh, patient, we have another message from this. This is a patient who develop uh, intra-abdominal hematoma, hematoma uh, anterior abdominal wall hematoma after laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy. 
Unfortunately, the patient had they hit the, one of the anterior abdominal walls in a patient who has mechanical heart valve. Post-op, he was started on uh, warfarin. So this is bleeding. We reverse with BCC. I know the answer. But the most important, you have to correct the bleeder. So how to correct the bleeder? Patient for taking for inter, uh, intervention radiology for angioembolization with successful outcome. So if you don't correct the underlying cause sometime, so if you, you have to correct surgical and uh, you give uh, medical uh, factors. Message for patient, if the patient having severe abdominal pain and warfarin, excruciating abdominal pain, spontaneously or after trauma, think about rectus hematoma. This compartment is very narrow. Any bleeding, there is no space to expand. So compress in the neurovascular bundle, severe abdominal pain. So this is rectus hematoma. So again, this patient was corrected with the PCC. Yeah, what about the drugs, rivaroxaban? We have a patient, last case we conclude, a uh, 26-year-old female uh, who recently married, was in honeymoon, who developed right MCA stroke, which was provoked by OCB, and she was started on anticoagulation with rivaroxaban, 20 milligram to complete one year. She is a regular follow-up with the neuro and the thrombosis clinic, and the last intake of rivaroxaban was four hours. So just like in the peak, in the peak is after two hours, so around the peak level. Prior to her presentation to uh, ob in ER with exquisitely severe abdominal pain, history of preceding trauma. No history of preceding trauma, it was spontaneous. So INR was 2.2, but we don't rely on INR for such cases. But this is give you a clue, a patient taking the drug. But we don't rely, even if it is normal, you don't pay attention to it. Baseline hemoglobin 12, and she dropped hemoglobin about more than 50%. This is a massive bleeding. Ultrasound showing active bleeding from ruptured ovarian cyst. So this patient prepared for OR. And in the meantime, she was given 3,000 uh, PCC and no need for vitamin K because this is not uh, warfarin, vitamin K antagonist. She was planned to take into OR for interventional uh, or uh, open uh, surgery, but bleeding stopped. Bleeding stopped and she did not require any uh, intervention radiology or surgical intervention. Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude, just remember bleeding related to anticoagulant therapy is a nightmare for all physicians and associated with increased mortality and morbidity. And prothrombin complex concentrate is effective, fast, safe reversal agent to vitamin K antagonist and probably or potentially to new oral anticoagulants. The antidote uh, for Debigatron is available while ongoing phase three studies for direct TNA inhibitor like uh, rivaroxaban and uh, abixaban and incidence of bleeding on NOAX is comparable or I will say lower than the warfarin, especially intracranial hemorrhage. And again, always the bleeding, uh, the, the, the minute bleeding should be tailored to the patient and severity of bleeding. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm.